we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this Q&A because uh, ain't no time for breaks. Unless any of you guys need to need to go, feel free to hop off, go to the bathroom, take a quick, 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 uh, a quick tenor. But I don't want to keep you guys too long, so I wanted to jump straight into this Q&A, get some questions to you, and then let you be on your way with your busy days. So welcome, everybody. If you weren't at the podcast, make sure to check that out, post it as well. But this is our little q and I'm going to ask these guys all the hardest questions, and hopefully they'll get back to me with some decent answers. I hate their answers most of the time. They're very dumb people. Can't trust them at all. Horrible. All right. You can never trust us. No, we are, we are horrible, <laughs> Just horrible, horrible citizen content creators. How can I trust you? Jeez. We're, we're all we're all shills. I mean, that's that's the rule, right? We're all we've all been Angels. paid by CIG. Yes. Yeah. Mike Mike is paid opposition, so he he's Bro, paid to say I, bad things. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Jared's trying to get me beat up at CitizenCon or something. <laughs> A bunch of people with staff t-shirts are going to surround you and just start kicking. Listen, yeah. I, I have said so many terrible things about uh, about Elliot that I'm, I'm like, I'm going to see Elliot at CitizenCon. He's just going to stab me. He's going to yep. stab me and let me bleed out. So <laughs> I get it. You guys got your <laughs> annual bonus yet? I haven't gotten mine. Is it supposed yeah. to be a check in the mail or a direct deposit? Or Oh, oh, uh, oh, tree. I think it's after the <laughs> chip sale. Yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just... new to the, the the performance bonus, so I, I, I this is hopefully my first year getting it. <laughs> they just keep sending me um, pieces of armor and telling me to keep them safe and not lose them since I can't get them back. <laughs> That's my payment. All right, let's start the with some questions. Bonus here. a career pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh. let's start with questions, shall we? <laughs> Um, the first one we've got up is Stanko from our Discord server said, will CIG have to rethink their monetization strategy? Will the ship sales be enough to continue to finance the project? Or they may have to find new source of income, such as releasing Squadron 42, That's, yeah, yes, and use the sales to finance Star Citizen. So basically, like, do you think they'll be able to keep up financing the project? I mean, it does, doesn't look good this year so far. So, I mean, it obviously it looks good, but. It, it I, and now they're already trying to make money elsewhere, and it's it's not it's not a good look. I mean, do you see this post this week, guys? What the fuck? What no. post? Oh my god! It. The oh, do you guys know about the Arlington Gang mission? I've yeah. heard whispers. That one? Yeah, I've heard. Well, go go scroll down to the bottom of the post. The post was only there to to so, and it says like destroy everything with these sh these ships or something. You know, like oh, they can't god. even do a post to like communicate to the community without selling something so it's just oh. it's another just like bad look of where yes everything's a sale everything's a sale yeah and it's i, I i'm so conflicted i want them to find other means of making money but the it's always the way they go about it that's been like kind of just broken and dumb you know like the i think you know it was definitely in one of the things that we wanted to talk about today the the sale for the uh the career kits right that mm -hmm. was just like a super bad look and i know morph made a really good video on that and it yeah <laughs> so it's just like yeah. you want them to go in these directions out away from ships because my feelings are the ship sales have absolutely ruined a uh an integral part of progression in an mmo uh but we're way past that at this point there's no solving that problem so we got to figure out other solutions uh to progression and stuff it is what it is i'm still here um but the the i i, I don't i don't like what i've seen so far of the choices that they've made i actually i agree with you mike but i don't think they're ever going to have a problem with uh with making money if they keep doing ships i, I think they've been phenomenally successful with it actually especially considering that 85 percent of their uh their developers efforts and productivity are going towards a game we don't even have and uh is not paying for itself sure. so like everything that they're doing that they've done for the past however many years three four five years working on squadron 42 mostly has been on the back of star citizen i mean if that starts paying for itself after they sell it i think the ship sales will more than pay for the development of the game or at least it feels that way and then they've got you know episode two which i whatever but um I think it's just going to keep going this way. They're going to keep selling ships. They're never going to stop. The damage is already done, like Mike said. It's not going to be progression. Ships are counterfeit now. They have to find some other way to to make progression in the game. Hopefully, it's a reputation system. So but you that's think, another topic. 
you think like they will just continue to keep doing ship sales like they're doing now after that absolutely launch and yeah. always always the only thing Why i hope they change too good yeah, yeah. like I mean, it's, it's such an easy thing to sell uh, a player coming into the game. The only thing I hope they change is that they make, say, like an exclusive alternate version of a ship in the game or like an exclusive skin, something to give people some sense of ownership and earning something in game with the ships, as opposed to just buying everything on the website. I fear that that will become like everything is purchasable on the website. I, I hope to God that that's not the case. I would accept that if they said maybe we will limit sales to ships only under a hundred bucks. And if you are, if you like, if you're able to buy a ship, then you get it. I don't, I don't think I'd be okay with them selling ships that aren't in the game. You know, like if they're going to go and release a ship for sale, make sure it's going to be in the game by the time the sales page is up. I initially shrugged when you said that about the under a hundred. Cause like, why, why bother when they could sell $800 ships that have no gameplay with them and people eat them up. But I guess we're talking about more long term and when those ships are actually in the game and functional and yeah, yeah this not, would be like uh, this yeah, you don't race. have this imaginary thing in your head of, oh, I'm going to do this with my pioneer when you actually know what you're going to do with your pioneer and you actually know how good it is or how not good it is or whatever. Um, it, it'll be a much different story. So, yeah, like actually selling game packages, uh, which are maybe like mini booster packs, you know, hey, start here instead of here. Yeah. But you also have to achieve here is, uh, yeah, probably a good idea. I, I don't see them. I, go ahead, Trey. I, so this is something that I've found very interesting, and I did a big podcast segment on it because the you have to take into account how much they make on pr predominantly selling ships and how big they want the company to be. With the, mm -hmm. the turbulent acquisition, they're right at around 1,100 people. And based off of their, their goals for growing Manchester, as well as they're planning on growing the other studios as well, just not as much, in, by the end of 2026, they're not going to reach this goal. I don't, you know, I, I don't think, I think it's a pipe dream to think that they're going to reach that goal by that time. But their goal is to have a, a development studio of nearly 2,000 people. We're talking 1,800 to 2,000 people in total across all the, the studios. Um, at... You know, where we are right now, just prior to the acquisition, you know, and, and we can sort of, you know, uh, chart that out from the previous annual reports. We know how much the annual operating costs for CIG are. And I don't think that they can make as much as they need to continue to operate a company that's twice as large off of just ship, ship six, because that's a that's a, a, a diminishing market in terms of the amount of gamers who will be willing to pay hundreds of dollars for spaceships. It, it's kind of like, a, you know, when things used to be luxury items, when flat, big flat screen TVs used to be only for the, the rich, and, and now everybody has one, even if you're on food stamps, you know, it's, you make more money by selling things that are more, by selling more things that are more affordable. And that is what we have with ev like every big game right now is microtransactions. And a lot of people are very critical of them, but PES is built for microtransactions, for customization and cosmetic, cosmetics. You know, that, that whole system is built so that way, A, you can have lots of progression and persistence, but B, they, are, they have advertised that you're, you will have the ability to cosmetically and, and uh, it, you know, customize your ship, your persistent hangar, your hab you know, apartment, your outpost that you build. No other game has had the... As, but not had planned. It's all, you know, most of it's planned, obviously, but no other game has planned to have as much op options for cosmetic um, and, and, uh, and otherwise customization as Star Citizen is planning. And the, the, it, yeah, that makes for good gameplay. It also makes for a, the potential to make a ungodly amount of money. Now, will Star Citizen ever have 100 million people playing it or whatever it is for like they have for Fortnite? No, absolutely not. You're never going to have that kind of concurrency. But if you have an appreciable percentage of that with far more options for cosme uh, cosmetics and customization that that game has, because you have a system like PES and you have ownership as a player of all these things, that's where your moneymaker is. You know, and I, I hate the idea of like loot packs or whatever. But I don't mind the idea of people being able to purchase the armor that makes their character look the way they want or the skin for their ship or the furniture for their hab. Um, 
And yeah, those things should obviously be in game and you can earn them. But if you just want to look that way and pay five bucks, you pay five bucks. And that to me is because uh, I, I do not like the elitism of expensive ship sales. I, I don't agree with that as a long term funding model. I think it's an OK funding model. I think it's going to continue, but I don't think it's going to be the lion's share of funding. And I think it's, you know, I hate to say it, but I think it's smart on CAG's part by going for a funding model that is, hey, you can buy the game package. You can also buy cosmetic upgrades and customizations. You can also buy the single player campaign and you can buy expensive ships. And that way you're not tied to one single thing like they are right now. And I think being tied to that right now is to their detriment. And, it, you know, marketing is doing what marketing does, but it makes them look bad by having to constantly market expensive ships. Yeah. And we've also seen year after year, the speed at which your Kraken sale, your Idris sale, the speed with which they run out, it has gone up every year. You know, and so you have you, you have a, a larger game gamer population playing SC, but fewer and fewer of those people are willing to pay large amounts of money for the game or, or parts of the game. But they will, consumer psychology, pay for things that are a dollar, you know, yeah. 50 cents, five dollars. And that's how you make your money in this day and age. And it's it's simple consumer psychology. And, every, you know, every company knows that. Yeah, you, know, a lot you, of... you bring the. Yeah. And, the, you know, and, and making ships, that's a lot of dev effort to make a very expensive asset where you're limited to the only amount of people that'll buy it. Whereas you can hire gobs of, you know, cheaply paid developers to make interactables for your hab, your ship, your outpost. Yeah. Super cheap, the, super fast. The cosmetics and props are going to be a big one, I think, going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. Astro Hub, how about you? Uh, I, I don't see CIG stopping what they're currently doing, but I do see them diversify, diversifying. Um, the, one of the things that CIG has claimed in the past, and again, this is a dangerous thing to always take CIG at their word, but um, CIG has said in the past that their goal was, uh, here's, a, here's a common thing I've heard, for instance, which is um, everyone's going to be working on Squadron 42 Part 2 rather than S Star Citizen because that's where they want to they do. So there's going to be no one moving over from Star Cit from Squadron 42 to Star Citizen. Um, but the thing that they've said in the past was that they wanted to, they're, they're putting a lot of effort up front right now to build the foundation for Squadron 42 so that when they do the next part, they don't have to kind of rebuild the game from scratch. They're going to use the same engine and then just kind of move forward because they wanted to use a similar, um, similar concept to what... Uh, um, Aaron did with the Lego games, which is you take the same foundation, you build a little bit on it, and you re release the next one, and you do it in a timetable of two to three years. So that way you're, you're dropping out a new one every few years without with minimal updates to technology because you don't really need to do so. And uh, they've talked about doing side independence, uh, you know, like, a, like single player games, maybe small little iterations. So I think microtransactions, cosmetics, uh, those sorts of bonuses to help you kind of get more personality because this is an MMO and those are the things that are very important in an MMO is personality and, and flair uh, will all be added, will be expanded upon. Um, those packs are god-awful, but the reason why those packs are god-awful right now has more to do with the fact that you can't retrieve any of them and they're not really a good value uh, than, than the fact that they're, they exist. If you could get those those back after like a 24 hour cooldown period, I wouldn't have nearly as much problems because we've had those issues for in the past. Yeah. But, but like CIG is just going to try to find more ways of making money, but I don't think ship sales are ever going away. I don't think concept yeah. ships will ever go away. I think, I, I think this is just it's what it is. So my, my biggest problem with this is, is sort of touches on what you're touching on there. Paul is, is that we can't get them back quickly, but it's also the, the idea that CIG is always putting the cart in front of the horse, for example, oh, yeah. uh, we, we oh, yeah. watched an, we watched an entire video on ISC this week about how, well, look at all these problems we have with these ships that we've already created. And now we have to figure out how we're going to make vehicle munching with these ships when they should have figured out how they're going to make vehicle munching and then make the ships work with the the vehicle munching. Right. Right. So it's the same thing with the cosmetics. We have to figure out how we're going to do our cosmetic system before we sell the cosmetics, you know, and it's like that. That's the problem here is that they they still haven't decided are we getting the the uh, well, first up the current system is the worst possible situation of selling the item and not the the cosmetic aspect so now you've taken away the gameplay of 
finding the sniper rifle, which is added into the game. And I think one of the best aspects of the game is up at, you know, having your players actually play it. Imagine that. And then if you want to apply that very cool cosmetic, you can, right? Like that's how I would have liked to see it. That's again, my personal preference. I don't know if that's how it's going to be. I don't know how, what's planned there. They actually have not. They've told us that they want to have discussions um, is, is that, and yeah, it's just not great. So it's always putting this cart in front of the horse situation that that really sucks is yeah is uh they could have easily sold me on the gameplay and and then made that and like very that's what i loved about this isc was they prototyped it in front of me i have an idea of what they want to do and then i could decide if i want to buy the spaceship out you know it would have been so good if they did that the the order of operations still would have led us to 600 million dollars i think if they if they were happy with showing certain things ahead of it but yep. yeah that's my big thing with with cosmetics is th this is not you are buying the not even the tier zero cosmetics we don't know what the hell is going on and it's just the same thing with this it's to what we were kind of complaining about earlier it's making the same mistakes over and over again and never really doing anything to resolve them yeah all right uh next question and i'm gonna I'm going to emphasize that we will probably need to answer questions fast from here on. Mike, I think we're going to lose you pretty soon, right? I'll yeah, yeah. check. I'll I'll see. Double check right. where we're at. I got well, no go problem ahead. when I said 30, 40 minutes, probably like 10 minutes ago. So okay. I think we're okay. I just, I don't want to run anybody over time. We've been at this for a little while. So whenever no, anybody good. does need to step away, let me know. Uh, the next question is, what are the biggest lessons CIG has learned and the biggest lessons they have failed at when it comes to communication with the backers? <laughs> you wanted a short one. <laughs> I, I, could, I can do we this hit, very We hit short. so much on it already, though. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You can summarize what we've said. I, I'll, I'll do this very quickly. The biggest things they're still struggling with is how to communicate in a timely manner. The thing that they have learned, which I think is good, is to um, when to communicate, uh, how much to communicate when. So like the, the roadmap is a great idea. Uh, Jake, when Jake came in and helped make that change to where we only see one patch ahead, it sucked ass, but now we don't get the complaints about this thing was on the roadmap and it got removed because they couldn't keep it. So like that was a fantastic addition because it helped keep expectations to what just the next patch and we've You're hardly okay, seen buddy. anything especially anything that matters slipped from that uh, but they, they still have a problem where where they they say something and then it they just don't talk about it so like they, they're better at communicating expectations worse at communicating uh what's going on yeah um sorry well, i have to hey tree could you turn on push to talk by any chance we're getting a lot of, <laughs> of feedback in the background um all right anybody else wanted to answer that one I mean, I guess around communication, I, I think I'm with Paul 100. percent They ha they have to do more stuff like what they did with the roadmap and accept the consequences of the backlash that they got by doing it. But now look at things, right? And I, I mean, I called it right away that this. I thought it was a great idea. Everybody thought I was an idiot, and I think it's been pretty pretty good so far. Uh, I think they should just kill the progress tracker. I mean, that's where I'm at next with, with a lot of things on, on how they're communicating um, just because it creates expectations for everybody. I, I love what um, shiny's done with his website or whatever. It's all fantastic, but I don't think that that's uh, generally a good thing for star citizen, uh, the entire community. And it's, and that we should have to go to a place like that to understand what CIG is doing with their game. I think they should be much more clear with it. Right. And yeah. So yeah. Uh, as far as communication goes, it's a lot of, um, just pay attention and under, understand your player base. And I don't think they do in, or, or care to in, in a lot of cases recently, uh, price changes on ships, you know, lots of stupid shit over, the last year uh stuff like that that have been consistently happening over the years as far as ar around the game um i don't know my my feelings about isc is less about game development and more about star citizen development i'd like to hear because I'm, I'm sorry star citizen is not game development it's this weird amalgamation of 
a crowdfunded game and they're not doing what other traditional studios do. They're not teaching anybody game development in a lot of ways is how I feel. So um, I definitely have my gripes about Jared's direction on things. So I don't know if that's part of this question or not, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, more for Tree. You guys have anything to say on that? No, they, I think they, they we, we talked about it already and, and they said, I think pretty much what I'm thinking as well. So. Cool. I think the only thing I would add is I think the community team needs reinforcements so the community team can do more sanity checks on things that other teams yeah. do or say, uh, because I think that would really help soften or prevent a lot of things that Salty talked about, that Astropub talked about, uh, that everybody has gripes about, is if X team or X person ran something by Jake, hey, you're okay, sorry, beforehand, <laughs> I think that would probably, probably help. Uh, they're just yeah. excited to get a word in. Yeah. <laughs> to, to add to true real quickly about that whole thing it's uh jake has constantly said he wants to add more to the to the progress tracker in the roadmap they just yep. don't have enough people to help him he just doesn't have just like with everything else it isn't yeah. finished yeah <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, the, it's the version just, one and and those those are sort of those sorts of things it's like if, if cig had the manpower that they wanted to have it probably would be a better communication as well as the other things so yeah all right next question with the current prolonged slowdown in ship production in ship production they say 50 percent slowdown i don't know where that comes from should cig at least release more ships ship variants on a quarterly basis no i no <laughs> no they keep adding to the the list of things that they have to then develop the game for where again they need to develop the game and develop the ships to i think yeah. the centurion was like literally the best example of anything i've ever seen jump town comes they find this this missing uh, gap of gameplay that needed to be there, and they built it and then sold it to you. And yeah. you didn't hear me yelling about any of that. It was that was the steps that I, I wish we could see more of. Only wish the Centurion actually worked, but yeah, yes. it was a good yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was more effective, but it was a good process. Yeah, it's yeah, better. It it's better process. to find the gaps. It's better to find the gaps in the gameplay and then so. fill those games. Yeah. With, with ships i so, think that so and got to work on the gameplay yeah i'm not concerned with additional variants unless it's exactly that it's a variant that adds something to the gameplay i'm more concerned with like not if they're releasing ships but if they're dealing with that incredible backlog that they have so okay yeah, those sell too when when a new ship comes out that previously was people buy them still yeah. right yeah, like, yeah. And the whole sea is gonna blow up the the freaking uh, the freaking money tracker because people like the whole sea and people I mean, how much is gonna buy cost it? too that yeah. price is gonna go up go up yeah yeah okay next question how do you think the conversation at cig to push the career kits went was what was their totally not just grabbing money justification for themselves they was grabbing they didn't money. say anything yeah, I think it was somebody on the marketing team who has no idea what's going on made the decision without asking anybody if it was a good idea. Yeah, and I, just I, made, I think just posted it. I think it was it was a couple of ideas to say, "Hey, let's sell uh, uh, gear." And I do. I would also argue that there was probably some. They're taking some feedback because I can't tell you how many people have said, "I want a starter pack that just has gear and no ship." And what somebody heard at CIG was sell gear. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah all right um let's see another question here has cig actually discussed what te technical walls they've been running into trying to get server meshing working not recently nope last thing not we heard six was months. was decoupling the um the the replication layer it's the last thing we heard it's a big yep. problem the server meshing black hole is the first black hole that's actually in game. <laughs> they did yep. it. They figured it out. Yep, they did it. All right. Uh, do you think we are going to see landing zone gameplay, i.e. at Loreville, we can land somewhere in the city with, and deal with some nine tails or even something like doing a drug deal? So like missions in cities. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, eventually. They when? talked about yeah. it. Yeah. When, no when, the interior, when, when, when the interior procedural tool is done, which... Right. Yeah. Not it's even Montreal, paper concept right I mean, we, right also, now. we already kind of see it with the Orison missions. That's technically a city mission. It's a little weird because it's Orison, but, like, they do that in Lorville or Arcorp. 
it, it that come was off the, the same way. yeah that was their first there was their first attempt at it and it was it was a, it was a really good approach i like the, i like the idea of it but the only other things they've done are paper concepting that we saw in a video like half a year or more yeah, yeah. Ago. I, I would argue we have a lot of uh, law system updates that are required before that happens as well right yeah yeah yep. that's true yeah which we've uh, all seen the have, have their edge cases yeah gosh yeah camp in right. the opening <laughs> From the Next safe up. zone with a grenade don't, launcher. Don't yep. get me started on any of the law system. You know my 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 big rant about how I hate the system entirely. But <laughs> that's a rough one. That's a rough one. I think. As someone who has not played SC in at least nine months because the experience was hot garbage, why should I come back? It's not you hot garbage have. anymore. <laughs> it's, wow. it's cool it's down. A completely it's different no answer. Hot. It's yeah. still a really warm compost pile. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it's really uh, rough still for for me at least my, my other assumption garbage. is that nine months ago was what november right yeah last year so like we've gotten from like eight 318s garbage and now it's actually there's there's a lot of performance increases there's there's a lot of improvements that has happened since then but um it depends on what he's into because yeah. like you, dude, if you like like salvaging and mining and things like that, I'm sorry. That is the some of the best things I've seen them do ever. And yes, mm -hmm. there's so many. There are lots of issues and and uh, sprinklings of hot garbage with all of that as well. But it's fun. But it's it's <laughs> pretty fun. And the thing for mining with me is it's future focused. Yeah. Like mining actually hasn't changed as much as it's there. But it's that they developed something with like the future in mind. It it just blew my mind, and now it's like, okay, well, when's the future? But still, it was something yeah, it's that been really just, fun to watch your org videos. Yeah, generally made me feel more positive about these things. Is is like, okay, somebody there cares, and they're allowing him to care. Holy mm -hmm. crap! It's been amazing. Yeah, it's been good to see that. Praise be to Torsten. Yeah, I would say like you can't just you can't ask somebody uh, with no context why they should play Star Citizen because there's a lot of different no. reasons to play it, and there are some pretty significant ones to to stay away from it. So context yeah. is helpful. Yeah, I, I would say if if the issue is performance, there's been a huge amount of performance improvements since since nine months ago. Um, the finished the fit completion of um, oh what was it? Um, yeah, Gen 12, and then the starting on, on uh, things like Vulcan. Uh, I'm getting better frames. I think everyone's getting better frames in general. Um, though I haven't really heard a lot of people complain about performance, because now it's almost directly tied to your gear, rather than just being, it's hot garbage um, 20, across the board. Um, yeah. But again, if, you, if, you, if you're like normal people and you want to play a video game, then Star Citizen is not quite there yet. So... Yeah. Yeah. So. I've had a lot of server performance issues of not being able to sell things after going out and mining or going after going out and yeah. salvaging. I've had issues with like people not being visible with stuff falling to the ground, just waiting minutes for things to load inventory, not working at all. My helmet disappearing like that's constantly happening to me still. So I don't know. Anybody have the high B win thing? I mean, that is the I had that with when they launched the last uh, free fly. If, if that's the other thing, avoid free flies at all costs. Everybody should know that by now. It's happening to me but, now. You know, other than like, oh, man, I break. haven't gotten it except for uh, with the high concurrence concurrency from the, the, the last free fly. It just came out of nowhere. But then it settled down after like 10 minutes. It was yeah. you know, it was weird. All right. Uh, next question. I'm actually I looked ahead and I've got another question here. That is too long for me to read out, so I sent it to you guys via text. You can read that and be ready to answer it after this one. But the current question is, what last second items do you feel could be added to Alpha 3.20? Well, I would love to hear them just say that there is something to trade from station to station with the whole C. Done. It is the simplest thing. I it we currently correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I don't do much trading, but I'm 99% sure there is no uh, L1 to L1 or whatever trades that exist on the market. All you have to do is a little something like that, and I'm probably uh, sort of okay. I think you're muted, you're muted Paul. Paul. Yeah, you're, you're muted. I thought my headphones died. Waste, waste, waste and scrap. <laughs> waste and scrap. Yeah, but you can't trade them to each other, right? You can buy them Not and really. sell them somewhere else. 
Yeah. I mean, you don't make them a lot of money or any money, but you can, you can technically buy them and move them from one station to another and not make any money. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Okay. Yay. Probably, they probably need to, I mean, I hope they're doing something with the, uh, the quantity timers for, for stuff for shipping. Cause I know people have to wait huge amounts of time for certain profitable items. So that, that would be, it'd be rough if you had to fill up a whole C and you had to wait like half a day to fill it or something ridiculous. Oh boy, yeah. It'd be, I think we really need to wait until we see more from, um, um, gosh, uh, from the new, the new cargo system, the new cargo loading system they've introduced for the whole C. If, if it's going like... to be just the whole C or everything, or we need more details on it. And seems like it's just, the, I'm assuming it's just the whole C from how they stated it on the release view. Yeah. That's true. Yep. I, I wonder if it'd be the whole A as well, though, because that ship also has issues with, lo uh, with landing, with cargo on it. That'd be interesting if they did that as well. I think yeah, the thing I that I would like would. to see surprise added, and this is probably not something that isn't on anyone's radar, and I'm surprised CIG hasn't done it already, is the two-handed tools. Why do we not uh, have the, a two the, the two-handed salvage tool with the accompanying backpack? And... You know, I get that vehicle tractor beams are you know more complicated than handheld. Why? Where is my two-handed uh, tractor beam? Do you think because it's not in squadron, or maybe isn't used in squadron, so they don't they, they're not prioritizing it. They were telling know. us yeah. about. I mean, it's just another time when they were telling us about the salvage backpack and getting that ready, and that was all throughout last year. And then salvage came, and I now feel like that's no talk about a it. Fairly low-hanging fruit. Maybe I'm wrong, but I would love to have. Yeah. You know, like I love tractor I beams in all that. forms. Yeah, they, they have they the showed asset, it. you know, yeah. why do I not it, have it? If you're going to add more containers, because hopefully it's not just one SU, 32 SU, but they didn't clarify in the card, so I don't know where to set my expectations no, on that. that's what it is. Read the, card. They, read the card, or at least read the roadmap update. It said up to. Yeah, up to. So yeah. It, it's, it sounds like it's going up, and, the, and they've mm -hmm. shown sneak peeks of all the other sizes. I, I, think, I think it's fair to assume yeah. we're going to have other sizes. I, would say I think that. it would go a long way to help manage people's expectations, especially after the tractor beam video, if they added that one in for some of the for the larger containers in order to say, hey, you know, yeah, yeah the, this you're not going to be able to lift a 32 SU with this two handed. But you're, you know, at least say, OK, w the one the one handed only goes up to, I don't know, four or eight. And then after that, you need your big one. You know, so if you want yeah. to pirate your. uh your, your whole C, you know, you, you soft death a, a whole C, you need to have those two handed ones. But I don't find like, them in game. Sure. Fine. Great. Yeah. Do it. Only I, find I, them I in, in world. Yeah. I want my, I want my big yellow tool on my backpack. But the other or, thing is, I think the, I know that we were supposed to get a two handed cutter one. I, heard, I know there's the salvage one, but I think that it would be really great is if they added more variety to, cause they did the changes for the, the ground rocks. And I think it'd be cool is if they had a, a, a backpack that is tied to your two handed ground mining tool in order to improve your uh, give you better, I don't know, uh, performance or, or mining rate, being able to carry more if you're going to do ground mineables. And that same sort of oh. thing, just, you know, it's a it feels like low hanging fruit to me from actor feature or weapon feature or mm -hmm. both. Oh, well, since we're, we're taking a trip to Imagine Land. For things that probably will never happen in 320. I would love to see reputation. Pop on my magic carpets. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to see that you can't get those unless you build your reputation with salvaging or mining from some organization in the game. And then, and then you can get that stuff. But no, no, I, I'm, I'm not convinced anything surprisingly big will be in 320. I, any of the 16 items in that list would be amazing. But I, I have very low expectations for 320. This is a dangerous industrial tool and we don't trust you with it until you've, you know, done baby's first tractor beam. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But I mean, that's progression. That'd be so cool. I would, I would actually want to work towards it then. Yep. Yeah. All right. I will uh, oh, I'll add one more, the one quick thing, which is more quantum missions, more stuff connected to the quantum. That would be the one thing I'd hope because that's my deep in the back of my brain. Copium hopium is that quantum is starting to become more than just a uh, one thing that's done that was done two years ago and it hasn't been updated since. Oh, uh, dude, I, I can't wait for the PowerPoint at CitizenCon from, oh. from uh, Tony Z. Tony Z. It's going to yeah. be so sick, dude. PowerPoint, <laughs> nothing to do with the game at all is going to be amazing. I can't wait. Here's this amazing simulation that we've not hooked up to the PU yet, <laughs> which could be its own cool game, or to that be honest. We have that we have, but we haven't utilized all the positive things that we could do with it being hooked up to the game. 
because like yeah. fuel is there, repairs there, and they have done very little with it. Yeah, which is uh, one of my biggest disappointments over the last few years. I'd Huge say. disappointment. The the quantum yeah. simulation overall has just been flat balloon, or whatever you yep. call it. I don't know what the saying is. All right, next question. Um, I kind of summarized it down. I think to okay. why are I'm, you guys focused on the game on Star Citizen? I'm I'm I have to say that question is um, I'm not reading that. I'm happy for you. I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's two paragraphs Sir, this is the whammers <laughs> <laughs> it is a long question it basically just describes star citizen as play? a standout game yeah and asks why, why do you, you follow guys... the project still yeah i get it all the time why do you yeah. follow it if you hate it i don't <laughs> I, I, I just hate it <laughs> i want to love it that's why it's just his face it. Yeah. You shouldn't be here unless you love the game. Don't say anything bad about it. If you want to, yeah. just leave. Yeah. I, I want to uh, love it. That's why. It, there's so, there, I think the entire panel and most of the people in chat would probably agree that there's not many games that have the potential to be as cool as this. And uh, that's, I think, why we're all still covering it. And, and all like yeah. you have a very, very interesting group of people here that cover it in all different hey, ways. Hey. And, Put that down. In different aspects. <laughs> hey, Moon, <laughs> put it down. <laughs> but the yeah, the uh, that that's why I still cover it. Is it's super fun to still have these. We're all here. Are are you guys having fun? I'm having fun having these conversations, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. why we're all. I look still forward here. to this all week. When I knew that, when I learned that yeah. Tomato was going to host this, I was like, man, I cannot wait until Saturday. Right. It's a good that, talk. I think that's yeah. why we're here. Game's cool. Uh, has a lot of potential, and it's really fun to still talk about. I I think. And I've been saying this for a long time. I think a lot of people that are here following the project right now will not be here when the game is released because they will find out that it's not the game that they wanted. And uh, that's OK. There'll be a lot of people mm -hmm. that are that found out that it is. And I might be one of those people that are still here. I might be one of those people that are, are not. When I find out what the game actually will be and how it will play, I'll make my decision then. But for now, it's a lot of fun to still talk about and and enjoy those back and forth as much hate as I get. Uh, there's as much good conversation as well. So it's, yeah, it's been fun. Well, I, I, I'm for one, a paid shill. So I'm paid to be here. And that's why I'm still covering it. Um, Wait, you got paid to be here on the podcast? You, you guys are being paid? Wait, yeah, why'd you tell <laughs> them that? Actually, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> it came from CIG. They told me to just pass it on to Morph. <laughs> oh man, like everything you said, Mike, a hundred percent. But I also think, like, uh, looking at other games, like, there's a couple of reasons. Like, there isn't a game out there for me that really hits all, checks all the boxes that Star Citizen does. Everybody's just kind of taking certain facets of what I hope out of a space game and doing that really well. And honestly, you can't expect much more than that because the budget for this type of game, it's inescapably huge. Everyone thinks that this or that's going to be the next Star Citizen, but me having followed development for so long now, I've realized that... There's not going to be a next Star Citizen because no one's crazy enough to try to pay for it. It's, it's, the budget is just so, like you need so much money to develop an everything space game. It's just not tenable for any kind of two year release cycle. It so, may not be uh, for I, this. We don't even know. You know. Yeah, I mean, it might not even be for this. We're 10 years in and we're definitely we've definitely got 10 years more. I mean, if you guys think that we're going to be in a release, any kind of release in 10 years, I, I think you're going to be disappointed. Um but yeah, no, like I really, really, I, I'm still here because I, I love Star Citizen, and as as much as I am frustrated with the current state of the game and its drought, I I I continually voice my opinion on it because I think if you love something and you want it to improve, you don't just constantly say it's great. You you tell you tell them the truth, and you hope that they can learn from that. Um, I mean, that's assuming that I know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't, but I, I try to I try to be constructive with my criticism and stuff. So yeah. maybe I'm gonna be unhappy at times, but I I still love the game. Yeah. All right. Next question then. Are we in a normal SC cycle? New patch change, hype waiting, people getting bored, CIG is bad at communication. Will it ever will it get yeah. better after Citizen Con? Is this a normal cycle? No, this, yes this no. okay. Having and I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to brag or anything here, but having the biggest viewer base seeing my statistics drop off like a cliff this year, 
uh, for interest in Star Citizen, then looking at the Google search term results for searches for Star Citizen. Interest in Star Citizen this year is is at near an all time low. I, I I think that it's living off the existing backer uh, money that people keep buying in sales, but it's not gaining a whole lot of interest outside of the existing community right now. The and that's because of the current cycle being the way it is. It it feels like a drop. Well, yes, technically there are features that are being put into the game that is technically progress. As I've been constantly, constantly, constantly trying to get across, uh, it, it's that it, it's about the tangibles for people, the big things that people can read as actual progress towards the game. And unfortunately, for a lot of people who I know come back occasionally for them, when they come back and visit Star Citizen, they look at it as not having enough progress from the last time they played it. And they might have played two, three years ago. They're still playing the same bunker missions. They're still, still killing the same NPCs in space, experiencing the same bugs. We're in the same star system. Um, you know, the thing they want to play still isn't in the game. So you can only go and do that for so long. And I think we're just right now here at this point where it feels, even though technically, technically it's not like the the, the pre 3.0 days where we had no updates for a year, it feels like that because this duration of very little content has stretched from the last CitizenCon in 2018 for this long. And it just feels just so, so difficult now. So I don't think it's a typical cycle. It, it's, it's particularly down. I think CitizenCon could improve it potentially, but um, it really highly depends on what they talk about. If all they talk about is just uh, the road to 4.0 again and pyro, I think people <laughs> are going to roll their eyes and, and get bored. But if they talk about, you know, you know, a Squadron 42 release and like some things we didn't expect after 4.0, I think that might be that might help a bit. Um, I will I will say that it is a normal cycle in the sense that July is terrible just for gaming mm -hmm. in general, because July is, is bad. Like July, I think even when it comes to like, like monetization speaking, uh, is like the lowest monetization after January. It, like January it is. Like goes off the cliff. And so as a result, there is, there's a little bit of that there. And because CIG goes basically every year, a uh, silent, but I think the difference as well is that you have Starfield, which a lot of people who really hype space games are looking towards Starfield. And, they're looking towards that, that coming out. And there's probably more hype for Starfield in my experience this year than I've experienced with other space, similar space games in the past because it is a Bethesda game. And so a lot yep. of the people who would normally be excited about Star Citizen just aren't because of the long, it taken so long for them to get to 4.0. There isn't, there, there's been four years looking at Pyro and still not out yet and all sorts of things like that. So there's definitely other factors, but you also get, into, get hit into the fact that it's also a normal trench and this trench has gotten deeper. So it's a I would bit say of yes and no. it's insanely deep because I have around four years of data of constantly covering Star Citizen and it's never been this bad. This is this oh, yeah. is really bad. I'm, I'm down to double digits and subscriber counts for my uh, for, for, for one of my channels and third, triple digits. And it's low triple digits for, for the Astro Historian. And I was at a thousand subscribers uh, uh, like a month. It's definitely slowed down year. over the course of this year. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's like, it's I, last I, two I went months, from, it just went off a cliff. <laughs> I went from 3,500 a month down to like 300 a month the, yeah. in the past 90, 90 days. So I think it's telling because Jared said straight up, you know, they're, you know, I'm, we're covering this. They won't let me cover this because of CitizenCon. And hopefully, you know, big caveat, big air quotes. Hopefully that means that they're going to cover a lot of good things at CitizenCon that I would otherwise hope that they're covering, you know, because based off like the monthly reports, when they talk about how far along certain things are that we've been waiting to see and have shown to us, because that's I like reading the monthly reports. But at the same time, we have not seen anything. We have not they've not shown us anything from the star map. They've shown us little tidbits here and there from like yeah. the new AR marker system. Um, you know, they've shown us a little bit here and there from MFDs and stuff, but there's a lot of big features that are huge quality of life things that will make a big deal, big difference to the game that are, you know, should you know, we, we hopefully will get shown at CitizenCon that will get drive a lot of hype, especially if those are things where they can say, hey, this has been in the dev, the dev branch for Squadron for months and now they've tested it thoroughly and they're going to work on importing it. That's what I'm hopeful for. And I think that's why we're in this drought because they are waiting to show those things. You well, know, the, the next. Um, I, 
I was, I I just want to say, if I hope to God, it's, that's not all because I mean, I I know we're really hyped for it. I'm really hyped to finally have a star map and stuff like that. But I think that the, the gaming community will laugh at that because if all they're talking about is a star map, that's like a basic thing. Oh, I'm that just throwing it out as an example. Play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, for, I, I it's a big thing for us, yeah. but dude, it was on Starfield's uh, mm-hmm. demo. They never mm-hmm. talked about the star map. They just showed it and it was like, oh, look, something yeah. basic that looks decent. And how many Back star and like, content creators have done that exact same thing? And I'm like, for the love of God, just get it into the game already. Yeah. And yeah. do the same thing. With, do the same thing with the, the like we've gotten a little tidbit with the new interaction system, you know, and, and the um, the the way that things sort of pop up, but not a whole lot. There's so much that's behind that squadron wall that they need to get into the PU in a timely manner, but they also need to show it because there's a lot of things where they just haven't hardly shown that, but they've talked about it ad nauseum in the monthly reports, which yeah. constantly trying to make surprises out of it. I, yeah, I hope like you tree though. I mean, like, I think you're like, I hope what you're saying is right that they're waiting to show this at citizen Con, but I think also that they need to, say that hey this is going to be the next patch to actually get the hype of people wanting to come back if they're just saying we're gonna do this someday it'd be like all right yeah we've heard that before yeah yeah, yeah i might be the only one like talking about youtube numbers that the numbers are typically higher but i think it's because a lot more people are resonating with uh opinions that i've had for the last five six years uh because they're because of how bad things have been so i think i'm a little bit of an anomaly in that in that case um so yeah, i've the had the king man I've had the four digit subscriber numbers uh, pretty consistently on both channels lately. Nice. And it's, but that, yeah. I think that's just because it's, uh, it's e- easy to feel the way that I, I normally feel, I think. <laughs> Shameless I, I, plug, I, I do it all for charity. So, I, you know, yeah, it doesn't, there you go. I, I feel bad for you guys because this is well, a significant part of your income. And Salty, you, like, correct me if I'm wrong, you, left your full-time job career to do this full-time right and so yeah it's a big deal i left my career but my career was a part-time job so it wasn't that yeah i I did very good money to make less money i'm i'm happier though yeah it's Um, a a swift kick to the the not happy bits if this happens (laughs) to you it's not fun being reliant on star citizen for (laughs) your entire living well it's also it's also more of a a gauge engagement because like up until this point, pretty much the train that is Star Citizen he had no breaks. Uh, like the community grew and grew and grew and grew. And even CIG was just like, we can't handle the sheer volume of people who are starting to log into the game for the last three years. And if you looked at like the metrics for Star Citizen on YouTube, Reddit, Twitch, anywhere you look for social media, the mentions of Star Citizen, they had been growing or steady for years. I think this is the first month in a long time where that, that, that metric has gone down um in in a significant way that's more than just like a, a little blip and then push back up so i think that's, I think that's lots the of reasons i think yeah other other games are looking more interesting and uh, there's there's a lot of other games that are just doing a decent amount of things well and it just makes the allure of of sc maybe not as exciting as, as it was before for the time being because people know the state of the current game isn't the, the best i guess yeah. All right, next question is actually about CitizenCon, if you guys are expecting anything big there. Uh, and even if there is, what's the likelihood we will have another year of drought? Another year? Uh, yeah, certainly likely. Why not? It's been every <laughs> other year. I'm confused. I mean, this we'll year definitely have droughts. Yeah. yeah, they just mean the continued of, of this one, uh, I guess. Uh, another year oh. plus of content drought that we're currently going through. It it all it all mm. depends on on server meshing, right? Because of uh, everything we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. it, it feels like they won't continue to they won't start actually making the game until after. So if they're struggling this much with PES, which they said is a larger part at the time, we'll see uh, when they actually start doing more server meshing stuff or they talk to us, we'll know a little bit more. But I think it, it's entirely likely that we have a whole another year of this again. Why not? Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I don't know. I, um, go ahead, guys. Tree. Uh, the I think it just depends on what content you're looking forward to. Yes. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that content-wise is 
you know, uh, an expansion of the game wise server meshing is, is kind of is locked, like Salty said. But there's a lot of stuff that they can uh, bring over in the meantime from Squadron. There's a lot of things that they are working on that were being blocked by PES that can come in that time frame. And so, yeah, that the the things that I want more than anything are the quality of life updates from the flight model, from the uh, you know first person. Uh, AR markers, your uh, scanning, uh, the new scanning system, the uh, MFDs, the star map, all of that stuff to me brings so much quality of life to the game that I won't even care about whether pyro and server meshing are in yet. Um, you know, they can bring in, you know, whether they can get bounty hunting done in a timely manner, I don't know. You know, but that I don't think that's blocked by server meshing. I think that is you know, just a thing that's in development and it'll be done when it's done. But it's the big quality of life things that I think that we could get in in between now and then that will probably really help the experience. And so nothing that I'm really waiting on is being held back by server meshing and 4.0 pyro. Um, it's the years Everything of frustration is. with how the, the quality of the game, the, the quality of the gameplay now. The if the gameplay is, that we have now improves, yeah. Yeah. Everything's held back by those things because they have to redevelop everything that they do to work within a PES environment. They have to do the same thing with server meshing. So even mm -hmm. the things that you like now, they all have to get reworked to work in these environments. So it's, I, don't think the, I get what you, I the, get what you're saying, yeah. but it's also mm -hmm. not entirely the case, right? I, I, yeah. I hope certain things, well. but like AR well, map markers, things. radar, and uh, star map, I don't think are being held back by server meshing at all. I think Your that's AR a, markers absolutely are. The PES, everything. Because yeah. it's what spawned in and what isn't. And all those things, when they when they come off the screen, like a lot of things, you know, when your party markers go away, stuff like that, those are AR markers, right? Same thing are we talking about? Mm -hmm. Those are all yeah. related to these problems, too. So absolutely. Like, literally, it's, it, it's everything, dude. It sucks. But it's that's what the problem is for me is everything is. That's why they don't develop as much. Or they do the bare minimum. Yeah just to to make it somewhat functional because they don't want to overdo it to have to redo it one would hope one would hope that cig is developing the current stuff that they're doing with server meshing in mind because yes. obviously obviously they're going to have to like pre-prepare with the right hooks and all the right things and they've been doing server meshing pre preparations for years we've talked about they've talked about like Mission teams, uh, ship teams, everything that they, they, we've seen in the monthly reports, like our our team is now finally up to date with what server meshing is going to be. So we hope that all we all they have to do is finish server meshing and those things will work. But yeah, doubt yeah. x x for doubt for me on that. <laughs> I, I I don't think we're going to reach and run into a, a a drought, but I do think we'll still run into a drought in the sense that I I think we're going to have more content come out after four point but I don't think it's going to be as much as people hope or want. Um, no, of course not. But I also know my experience with 3.0. When 3.0 came out, 3.0 was pretty bare bones. Like it was pretty much 2.263 two, lack with, with less less missions, and um, the, but but stuff to go on planets. And uh, I think we all do. We all remember um, a screenshot citizen. Uh, I should say uh, uh, sunset citizen and sunrise citizen. Where everyone I mean, just go to content. Reddit Hurston, today. It's Hurston really yeah. got us that. <laughs> still, still the same thing. I thought, but uh, the point being, like, like people will find content if you give them the sandbox and you give them, you give them some tools, they'll find ways of of, of getting entertainment out of it. And I think that's Absolutely. the big thing. Is the finding that, drought is the issue here, right? Because yeah, some people yeah. aren't having one. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and and if you release Pyro. People will will like see that as a huge win and as a huge expansion to the game, and they'll they'll see this is a new place to go. They'll see that as progress towards the actual final goal. And I think the mentality of drought will will be different. I think some people who will say this will see a drought after a month, and be like, oh well, I, I've done everything I want to do and I'm done. But I I don't think the overall feeling will be as negative because right now, four years of talking about pyro and still nowhere in sight. Once pyro is released, that that negative connotation goes away or at least simmers back to the background where people go like nix nix what about nix what about the next systems i think you but hope like, it goes away but don't you think there's going to be like i wonder if 
I feel like I'm going to end up being one of these people though, is like, <laughs> we've, yes, we've talked about it for four years, but I guess my expectations are more quelled from that recent, like Montreal SCL where they were like, we're not even working on it. Yeah. Uh, because what's the point, right? And the, yeah. so maybe it's not, the, the whole thing is, okay, you, ha you had X amount of years to do it and then they deliver it and it's just as bare bones as Stanton is. Mm -hmm. And you're Oof, like, well, yeah. what did, what did this do, right? This didn't do anything. You just made more places to go and nothing to do with them. And um, that's my expectation for Pyro, by the way. Is, I, 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 I do too. Yeah, but I don't know I, why I, everybody wants it so bad. It's just more places to go with nothing to do, but okay, more screenshots to take. Somebody will find their gameplay and, and somebody will not have their drought. My drought will continue though. So that's that's uh, my feelings. But I, I think that's what Tree was saying. Is there's like, no mining yeah. in Pyro, Salty. It, you're, you're not getting any new mining. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> 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 the Akiro cluster is entirely barren. You know, there, there's nothing I, for salty here. The, but I think that's the thing. It's like we're also not CSG's not slowing down with development. Like we're we're no. going in terms of content. Like we're going to have bounty hunting at some point. They're working on it. We know we've seen them working on it. We know they're working on uh, like they just Elliot was has been big balls about about um about him finally working on missions for cargo missions, so you can actually have those cargo mission mission chains. So like CIG is still building stuff. So even saying that like it'll be as bare bones as Stanton when it releases, we don't know what Stanton will look like when Pyro when Pyro is releases. It may have more content, which will sure. also be transferred over to, to, to Pyro. So and that, that's but I think that's that's the point when it comes to like drought is like it's your perspective on what drought is, but the fact that this thing happened will see as much of a will be seen as much of an advance. Um, and will quell some of that ne that negative opinion. The negative opinion will then go, well, cool, still nothing to do. I still don't they'll have- They'll find their way. Yep. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be things, but like those things will be less important in the community as celebrating the accomplishment and then explain, ex exploring those unique locations and stuff like that, so. All right, Vehicle we got to- That's all I want. We got to fire through these last few questions, <laughs> so I'm limiting everybody Wait. to 20 second answers. Oh. Morph, go ahead. Ah, oh, man. All right. Well, I, I want to say you, you asked for expectations for citizen kind of nobody answered that part of the question. So I was just a little oh, surprised. I, I was going to say, uh, I think I really do that. They're going to talk about squadron 42 and give a release date because they can't legally sell it without a release date. in I think at least Germany, so we should expect it. So will they meet that release date? That's a different discussion. Yes, but I think they'll release date. It. Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything. There's oh, so. yeah, a window. God, I hope we don't get a date. <laughs> yeah, there are, there are two. Yeah. You're, no, you're going to get a date. You'll get a we date. We have to. I, Legally, we I, have, they have, they have to. to do that. Have Otherwise, to you can't sell it year. anymore. Just give us, a, give us a window. Not a date. I've, I, I've had my, my tinfoil hat on for this one, but like there is a lot of stuff that, that's on the, on the backside of CIG that, uh, that's been, been moving and shaking that I'm like, they, there's something going on with Squadron. They wouldn't be doing X, Y, or Z of that. So whatever it is, yeah. I agree. I think there's going to be an announcement of a release date or some sort of major announcement in terms of progress that, that we, we haven't seen before. Um, beyond like, that, I can't, I can't tell you. I think there, well, like I said, I think there has to be because they took down the website. And the reason was a legal reason for Squadron mm. 42. They can't sell it without a release date in some countries. It has to have an actual date. So that's why I think that's going to happen for sure. I, I, I have heard that was a debunked rumor, though. So I don't know wh uh, where it was because I've, I've, I thought that too. And I had several members of the German community to reach out and said, that's not how. That's that's that law. Otherwise, that, that, why wouldn't they have removed it earlier if it's been yeah. for sale for all these years? It so. just has to have maybe to do with somebody suing them. I'm not sure. Yeah, a well, complaint or whatever. But regardless, I think we're going to get a date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question is: Is Star Citizen supposed to have a career class system? Are we supposed to specialize into something like medical or mining, nope. or is it just a free for all sandbox? Free for all. Do whatever you want. Yep. Mm -hmm. With reputation, be, I think wanna... reputation, I think, will play a role in, in what you can do in your professions. They even yeah. said it actually multiple yeah, times. Yeah, how far you can go, how deep it goes, maybe, but you'll yeah. be able to to do everything at the what the personal, the the singles playership, and the multi crew playership seems to be their their kind of uh, what would it be recipe for for gameplay systems because the only yeah. two that we have technically are, I guess you can consider medical a third. But it's a uh, salvage and mining, and they all have those. Um, I guess that that type. So game sure. loops. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, how much is marketing contributing to the confusion in communication around the game? This much. <laughs> the, the entire much. thing. All of it. One it, needs to it, put a leash on them. Bro, there's so many problems, too. It's like community, marketing, and video production are all three different things that clearly mm -hmm. don't talk to each other when they're all supposed to be the same thing. Yeah, sort of. Marketing and community usually are separate. Speaking from my experience in, in marketing, they tend to not talk to each other a lot. Community, uh, PR is, is in marketing, maybe. But at the same time, there, there definitely seems to be some decisions that are made by marketing without, the, without consulting or without yeah. understanding its in community impact. And the video production team uh, is just wanting to make cool videos. So uh, there's definitely some, some weird things there. And I think yeah, there's some like mistakes that have been made, especially around running ads on YouTube, which they should learn from, which I don't know if they have. They got so. some problems no, they're still with their playing. marketing. They're still playing. I'm still seeing the comments in my YouTube videos. How ironic is this that I'm watching this video of Mike saying this and it says playable now in the video in the yeah. ad before I watched it yeah. literally this week. Yeah, that's it's like, whoa, dude. Annoying. What are you doing? Okay, what YouTube if YouTube ads are that cheap, I guess. Mm. They are super cheap. Holy God, yeah. they're cheap. I can't, what? I can't explain to you how much cheap they are. <laughs> well, YouTube's you got a problem more? with their no, it's their ads. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they've got they've got problems, but we won't get into that. That's whew, that's a conversation. Yeah. Uh, what if there is no update on server meshing because development has actually been going smoother than expected for 4.0 to stay on track, and they are waiting for the reveal of their progress for CitizenCon? Brother, can you give me some of that? Hope everybody leaned back in their <laughs> chair. Like we did it at the same time. Mike. <laughs> can, we, can we can we get some opium? Whatever you have, uh, please uh, please uh, inject give. it into my into my into my veins, my dude. Um, oh my god! <laughs> it is chugging that copium. The only I, the only thing with server meshing is that you can see that there are a lot of people working on these things from different disciplines from different teams. I just want to know what that means. Just update me on it. That's all yeah. I need. Yep. You know, um, we, it, 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 think, even I don't have that much <laughs> optimism. <laughs> if, if things are going well, they can't shut the fuck up. All right, yes, that's yeah. that's the thing about CIG. Is that is the but how he's got no content, he would yeah. be all over it. Like, come on, for sure. So silly. There's your there's your answers. <laughs> Lean back in the chair. Oh, yeah. like you guys planned it. That was funny. It was simultaneous. It was like it wasn't <laughs> into each other. We just both did it. All right. Um, it's so cute that you guys are so in sync. <laughs> <laughs> how much of the Our low frame rates? Are, you guys are you guys are all synced up, ready to go. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much of the low frame rates we experience do you think are as a result of technical debt? Uh, is there still time for them to turn it around? Oh god! Ending with, imagine this was developed in Unreal Engine. Okay, dude. There's my answer. <laughs> okay, dude. More leaning back. Uh, this this again. I just, I, I just quick that it doesn't matter what engine they chose. That wasn't an option back then. It wasn't necessarily better than CryEngine. They had people from CryEngine. They would still have a, an enormous amount of issues. CryEngine is just a sorry, an engine is just a base to start with. You still have to program massive amounts of things on top of it to make it an actual game. They'd still have problems today. It's it's about the manpower. The sheer quantity of stuff they need to develop is is enormous. I actually so, missed, and, and that's the problem. I missed part of the question when they said um, low frame rates we experienced as a result of technical debt. They put in parentheses the old engine, so they're asking specifically oh, okay. if this is a problem with the engine that's causing all of this. I guess, and if no, Unreal would be better, things will get. Uh, un we we have Gen twelve. Vulcan is not in. They they yeah. explicitly told us that Gen twelve is the. Uh, the on the way to get to Vulcan, but Gen 12 only optimizes the render thread. Vulcan is what will optimize the main thread. That's the big issue. Yep. There's also a lot of optimizations. Uh, what's the uh, 10 pound 42? Go watch his video. He has a good recent video on all the things you can do to optimize your system for Star Citizen to make it run better. Um, but then Level Cap did a great video talking basically about this question in the last two weeks. And so I would yeah. highly encourage you to go check that out because there's a reason that CIG has their own engine team, their own graphics team. It's because they own the engine and they can do whatever they want with it. And so there's nothing about Unreal 
in Unreal 5 that they can't bring into their own engine because they have the people to do it. If you have to license your engine from someone else, you are beholden to them for support and you are beholden to what your contract allows you to do to that engine for your game. And so then you have a lot of hands tying. Their hands are not tied. It's just a matter of manpower and time and effort. And so Vulcan's going to make a big difference. You know, Gen 12 made a big difference for a lot of people. And it um, wasn't supposed be, to, they said. They said yeah, it wasn't yeah. really supposed to give that big of a performance increase. And there's still lots of optimizations to do, but it's a matter of getting the base tech in first and then optimizing it. Um, and they're they're chugging along. You know, uh, what's the name of that dev the, who, who did all the, the video talks on Gen 12? So the guy who wants Sylvan, yeah, yeah. Sylvan, who, who wants VR, who's working on the ray tracing and um, uh, what's the, the lighting? Uh, yeah. yeah, the they're working on all these big things for <laughs> what is <going> on? <laughs> you got Mothra oh, came over from Hong Kong and is now attacking Taiwan and <laughs> mosquito. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, ray tracing and um, Oh gosh, what's the what's the other thing that they're talking? They're they're literally <laughs> prototyping it right now um, for all the the lighting in global game. illumination. And global loom, thank you. Yeah, you just, you talked about it recently, Space Tomato. There's no cap on what they can do with the engine now because they have all the rights they need to it, and they have their own people who specialize in this working on it for them. So it's just a yeah. matter of not. It's not if. It's just when. Yeah, I I, th I think we can expect to see some great things from the engine as well. I mean, Vulcan is supposed to. I remember them having a talk at one point, it, like about how it was going to be the difference of how many entities could be on screen from then the thousands to the tens of thousands. Like it was a huge increase in performance for what you could see on the screen. Uh, yeah. And I know they're talking. They're also they're already talking about doing. Uh, it was in the one of the monthly reports. Um, global uh, GI VR uh, V-Ray, which is going to make the lighting yeah. a lot better looking as well. It's going to bring it up to like a more uh, next gen level again. So, I mean, I, it's not I think that we're still waiting on that improvement that they've been working on um, for for Vulcan integration to get yeah. that. But really good performance increase. OK, we got two more questions. Uh, answer these as as serious or not as you will. First one is, how far do you guys think we are from AI life forms on a large scale? Don't. What do you mean? Oh, I, that's so, I'm not sure what he means. Yeah, I don't if know what the context is. If he's referencing fa uh, fauna, like, like creatures, um, probably at minimum a year. Depends on when Squadron 42 comes out. Because a lot of the fauna they're working on right now is Squadron 42. Uh, they've talked I about like a dog and stuff like that. And the did they want to put a crab, a crab in yeah, with 4.0 though? Pyro, yeah, yeah. Pyro with Pyro, I would think they'd, that maybe they won't. I mean, but I thought they wanted to bring that with 4.0. Maybe, maybe it won't be in. There was like a I would cow be, too. Something. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if those AI behaviors are complex and are blocked by server meshing, kind of like the combat AI. Yeah, totally. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. The way I see it, Fauna's not coming until normal human NPCs can do things correctly. So I assume yeah. that's not happening until after server meshing. Yeah. Would anyone care if they remove them all from the landing zones? It'd no. be a bit NPCs? weird. Does it... It'd be weird, yeah, but no. I mean, is it any less weird than them all standing on chairs, having like cult yeah. meetings in the middle of a hallway and stuff? I mean, at least I feel I like there's a cult in the city instead of nobody at all. Okay. Yeah. I was curious what, what you guys felt about it. I, I, I just want them to be able to talk to one another. I don't care if they're, they're tree posing on chairs, if they're having conversations that somewhat, even just talking to make the background because it's so quiet. Like yeah. I, yeah. Anyone who's been to a city or an airport or, or like a place where humans congregate um, knows that they're not quiet. <laughs> they're yeah, very loud. loud. <laughs> so We're you, annoying in numbers. Like yeah. We're awful. We are. Okay. Last question. This one is for you, Salty Mike. <laughs> uh, why oh, no. do you complain about Star Citizen so much? At least it isn't pay to win. Curious. Oh, that's a I troll. Like that's a bait. It's a troll. <laughs> yeah. Did you? I, I think it's related to um, Yogi's post this morning. If you guys haven't seen that, he huh. he said that Star Citizen is not a pay to win game, and it was like what? <laughs> um, there's there's many definitions of that, but it's in in relations to ships. It's very it was just very concerning to me to see something like that when um, uh, his job is around balance, and if he's coming from the notion that 
uh, everything is perfectly balanced and fine uh, with the current s- situation. I think that that's sort of problematic. But why I complain all the time? I don't. Uh, you just you just like you just like to hear just about the complaints. It. Yeah, yeah. You just focus on it. I think if you actually listen to some of the things today, I I thought I was relatively uh, yeah. optimistic and and pretty happy mm-hmm. with things. So you you I hear what you want to hear. I can't protect you from not listening. Dude, Sorry. Like dude. literally in. A single YouTube thread. I've been told I was negative and too positive in the same oh, yeah. thread. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so stupid. It, it's the reality is, is I think, and I think I, I, I've gained the reputation as being a white knight for CIG, and and no one has seen the hour long discussions or I should say discussions rants that I've done on what CIG is screwed up on and what they need to to, to fix. They and you have none of that here at, at all yeah. in terms of like. Uh, I think you've been. You know, just balanced like any other human being is. They have things yeah. they like, they have things they don't, and people already try well, to put us in like political, like red and blue. <laughs> you know, it's like it, insane it's, here. The the I think the reality is is that we 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 have different ways. We all have different ways of presenting our uh, our content, and we're trying to, to to differentiate ourselves to make ourselves interesting and unique. So we'll pull out ideas that we think will get clicks or things that people will be interested in or discussions that we want to have and frame it in a way that people want to have it as a result people tend to put us in boxes because they see a thumbnail and and that's that's yeah. the reality yeah. is it's the thumbnail always oh. and the title the that's thumbnails. what people respond to yeah um okay i know i said that was the last question but i promise this is the last one okay. on improving communication is there a way they could do that without impacting dev attention maybe small questionnaires on hot topics uh have each team just give a smiley or frowny face in response to questions and stuff what do you they think? need more team members, more community team members. They need someone mm-hmm. who can who can chase down somebody at, at the team and be like, "Yo, what's the what's the status?" That's what they need. They just they or need like more shadow people. them a bit, like yeah. stay with them and just kind of like let them work and and kind of see what's going on. Yeah, Stop I don't know. I don't know what so the answer much is. stuff to Spectrum only. If you're going to put out dev information and development information. It needs to be on the social media or linked from the social media and talked about in ISC. But there's so much information that ends up from dev spectrum posts and so many people avoid spectrum like the plague. That is not a good way to share good and accurate information, because unless you constantly watch your Star Citizen news feed, you know, or, or the dev tracker, you miss out on all this stuff. It's not a, a good way to communicate effectively with a community that's literally a couple million people, you know, if not larger. Um, if, if you approach doesn't work yeah. very well, when you're spraying it everywhere. You need to have a yeah. con- consistent post. Yeah. If yep. you want to communicate that stuff, you need to be able to highlight it via your social media. Um, and I love Galaxical. I think she does a great job, but, um, I think that, you know, if, um, you know, that all the, the master modes conversation of the last 24 hours, that has been going on. The only people who see that are the people who are paying direct attention to it. Yeah, I didn't and, know about that. You know, yeah, and so I mean, it's. You know, it, I'm only hearing it, about this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are you are flying via master roads under the radar with your communication, and you can't have that. <laughs> yeah, I, I right. agree, like wholeheartedly with the ISC thing, and that's why I made that discussion of like these three branches being completely separated from each other. That makes no sense. You're all communication platforms that your community engages with and learns information from they should all be synced and they're mm. not and it's so stupid isc has need faltered to be synced a bit like this year. and marf yeah yeah isc has faltered i think a bit this year in missing the mark on what they're supposed to be communicating uh, things like yeah, that. Yeah, like fantastic thing. great yeah oh yeah okay okay you've also hired more people but we're where's the all we all we get is stupid b-roll that it has no value you know in a lot of ways adding to uh i find it more of the just gonna say i love the b-roll it's entertaining <laughs> i, I mean, love the b-roll yeah i i do it's good but it's just not it, information if yeah, if we fair. also had the other aspects that tree was pointing out then it's for me it's a total totally fine yeah feels... i think it adds incorrect context too much too it, yeah. it can be fun but i think it's also very problematic so the b-roll is great but it would be great to see the actual development b-roll like the pro like what we saw with hole munching rather than like examples yeah, and visual conceptualizations 
that right. they started putting the B-roll in, and I was like, just leave. It. This was the perfect episode up to the first half. I, I thought. I thought it was so good. I I think that asking for them to put B-roll in of the actual development versus talking to them and then supporting it with some concept footage, I, I, I like. There's gonna be a problem with them asking for that because they're gonna be like, well, I don't think this is presentable, so I have to spend some time whipping this up. Ah, I don't have time. We won't do it. So then they don't even talk about it. So I actually kind of would like for them to at least talk about it um and maybe have a little bit of supporting footage if it's even just made by the like the the video production team just kind of making it sort of like they want it mm -hmm. versus just not having it at all because that's the way i'm looking at it obviously i'd it. love for them to show us what they got but i don't think they they want to show us unpolished stuff yeah yeah that's fair all right guys that's it for our questions Thank you so much for sitting through this whole, this is a freaking mammoth episode of the podcast and the questions, a lot of good discussion. I hope people get a lot out of it. Um, but thank you all very much for giving me such a huge chunk of your day. Hope you've enjoyed this. And as always, um, if you ever want to do anything else, please reach out. But thanks again for being here, guys. Everybody in chat, thank you so much for coming and viewing this live. Folks, if you're watching this after the fact, the podcast will be up on the same channel, so go check that out. Or give this one another read through, uh, listen through because you didn't get to hear all of our amazing opinions and wonderful voices. And that great dual reaction from Mike and, and Morph. That was mm, <laughs> chef's kiss me, on that one. Tell me somebody clipped it. I, I need to see that. Oh, sure. yeah, we got the clip. I'm sure they got yeah, it. We got the clip. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, big thanks that. to Mrs. Tomato for all her hard work uh, behind the scenes. So. Oh, yes. yeah. She's out here. Trevis, nice to meet you for the first time. I don't know. If, What's that? I said, Tree, it was nice to meet you for the first time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nah. For, uh, big time fan, long time listener, however that goes. But uh, yeah, <laughs> just uh, I, I really appreciate what you guys do. Love your content. Have loved your content for a long time. So it's, a, yeah. it's an honor to be here as the backup quarterback to the other bald guy. In the <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I appreciated your insight on the show i thought it was really good so thank you okay. yes thank you trey yeah. I, 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 can you see me I, I will make the, i will make the plug that y'all should be watching everyone here should be watching tree stuff because they're criminally under underrated he did an entire video on like breaking down what the next big combat ship like next cop capital ship would likely be and like he had he 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 brought the receipts he slapped down the receipts and be like this 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 so like and, and he's got a lot of these criminally underrated videos for that. So please, please do. Um, there are so yeah. shameless plug. I need two more subs on YouTube to get monetized with ads. Oh, make it happen! And guys. all my all my monetization goes to charity. I take no money for myself. I do all right on my civilian job. I mean, drop um, that link so, in chat real quick. Yeah, link in chat. Yeah. Let's go. Let's You'll go give him that. subs. Um. Oh, oh gosh. Two. Let's get two hundred. Now I have to do it. <laughs> Oh, and also, guys, if you haven't liked uh, Tomato's video yet, what are you doing? Come on. It does help. Yeah. It does help. Although this one will be private because uh, this podcast is coming out on the YouTube channel at the beginning of well, this like, week ooh. or next week. Like him anyway. Like it. Yeah. It already said 1K like subs by the time I got there. Damn it. There you go. <laughs> Congrats, there you go. Tree. All right, Tree. Cool. Well, I mean, there are Tree is is one of many channels that are not getting as much attention as they should for Star Citizen. There's a lot of uh, information and stuff to compile and put together so a lot of people are taking it from different angles tree of course is also taking a unique approach so definitely check that out if you're interested in this content check out all these guys is everyone here going to be at citizen con yes. I, will be. Well, I will okay sweet I'm the four out of five. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah check out everybody here if you want to get more star citizen content and thank you so much for being here folks i'm gonna go ahead and pass you all on to loken another streamer here on star citizen who's playing doing his stuff yeah a fellow info runner so enjoy that everybody on twitch thank you again so much everyone for coming and watching and hanging out hope you had a great time and on youtube i think i can send you over to uh, nobody's playing Star Citizen. Look at that. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. It's, it's, it's almost the same story every single day. Um, so yeah, YouTube. Sorry, guys. Y'all are just going to have to settle with the ending screen. But thank you again, everybody, for coming. Hope you had a great time. We'll catch you next time.